Wait for the Lord, be strong. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Kings. The day came when the child of the Shunammite woman was old enough to go out to his father among the reapers. My head hurts, he complained to his father. Carry him to his mother, the father said to a servant. The servant picked him up and carried him to his mother. He stayed with her until noon when he died in her lap. The mother took him upstairs and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Closing the door on him, she went out. When Elisha reached the house, he found the boy lying dead. He went in, closed the door on them both, and prayed to the Lord. Then he laid upon the child on the bed, placing his mouth upon the child's mouth, his eyes upon the eyes, and his hands upon the hands. As Elisha stretched himself over the child, the body became warm. He arose, paced up and down the room, and then once more lay down upon the boy, who now sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gesat Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. She came at his call, and Elisha said to her, Take your son. She came in and fell at his feet in gratitude. Then she took her son and left the room. The word of the Lord. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior, of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, But I, in justice, shall behold your face. On walking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. (laughs) Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
There was a man who was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe, let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, 
that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had do he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow, that's a long gospel. But the church wants us during Lent to really think about it. So if we don't read this gospel on Sunday, we're asked to read it sometime during the week because it is such a pivotal moment of our Lord's life. Let's put the story together. We have Jesus who is friends with these three people, Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary. These are friends in the sense that Jesus goes to their house and relaxes with them and they're very comfortable with him. They have a good relationship. So much so that Mary thinks nothing about breaking the uh, traditional uh, rules of, uh, of customary taking care of people where Martha is caring for our Lord and serving him and Mary just sits at Jesus' feet as if she's a disciple to the master. And our Lord's perfectly good with that. And he's such good friends with her that she has no problem later on when he goes to dinner at their house just pouring oil over his head. Like she's very, very close to him. They're friends. Martha is such good friends with Jesus, she has no problem telling him what to do. When her sister Martha was sitting at his feet, uh, Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Martha was serving the table, she says to Jesus, Jesus, tell my sister to help me. <laughs> so she's, you know, she gets Jesus involved in their family squabbles, you know, and he's their friend. He's close to them. And uh, they have a beautiful relationship. John even tells us that Mary was the one who came into the house when, and poured uh, and cried over Jesus' feet and dried with her hair. So Mary had loved our Lord so much because he had forgiven her some grave sins that she had committed. These are very close friends of his. And even when they send the message to him that Lazarus is dying, it's interesting the words they say. So they send the messenger, and the messenger is told to say, your friend, Lazarus. Your friend, Lazarus. How beautiful. Your friend is dying. Now, our Lord's response is really odd because he does like, oh, my friend's dying, I better get there. He's like, okay, tell him I'll be there. And he waits, and he waits, two miles away. He's only two miles away. In other words, he's about a 30 minute walk tops if he's taking it slow. 30, that's it. And he waits, and he's doing whatever he's doing. Four days go by when he finally shows up there. He gets there, and Martha seems very perturbed, doesn't she? She gets and meets him at the gate of the city. She doesn't even wait for him to get to the house. She meets him at the gate. And the first words out of her mouth are, where were you? <laughs> Had you been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Is that not the most human experience we could ever have? When we experience death of a loved one we love so close to us or a great tragedy happens and we're praying, we're asking the Lord to intervene and to be there and nothing happens. The person dies or the tragedy goes on and we say to God, where were you? Why weren't you here? <laughs> I was calling for you. Why didn't you show up? And our Lord, you know, he, he gets into a little dialogue with, with Martha trying to explain to her that he's the resurrection, the life, and that he had to allow his friend Lazarus to die so that he can bring something greater out of that tragedy. He can proclaim something more powerful through it. If we actually look back at some of the greatest tragedies of our lives, the greatest loss we have suffered, we will find in it a very powerful act of God, that God was doing something great in that moment. Sometimes God has to permit evil, permit tragedies. He permits it, doesn't will it, he permits it in order to bring something even greater out of it. We may miss the person who's dying and suffering and passes, but it may be their time to enter the glory of the kingdom of heaven. They're receiving something greater. 
I always say God's will is like the back of a painting. We're always looking at the back of a painting. It looks like a blotched mess. On God's side is a beautiful painting. We only see the blotched paint side. We, don't, we can't figure out what he's doing. But obviously here he allowed his friend to die to bring forth something greater, to proclaim a truth that he is the resurrection of the life, that he has the power to give life, take life, and to restore life. And so he does. He doesn't just walk around as if he's uninvolved or disconnected from their tragedy. He enters into their tragedy. So beautifully, our Lord emotionally enters into it. He enters into it so much that he weeps. When Mary comes to him, he sees Mary weeping in the crowd. And the shortest line in scripture, and he wept. And it wasn't just a little trickle down the tears if he was fake crying, as if, okay, let me make this look good because I'm going to raise from the dead, so I'll make people think I really care. You know, it was so much so that people said, look how much he loved him. Look how much he loved him. He was weeping. Even though our Lord had to allow this tragedy, allow the suffering, he enters into the suffering. So where we're going through those sufferings that the Lord has to allow, he enters into it with us, weeps with us. He has to permit that tragedy, that painful event, but he enters into it with us, accompanying us through that suffering and help the, allows us to see the greater good as to why he allowed it. But he's with us in the suffering. Now Martha has great faith and she says, I believe that you are the resurrection life. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then they get to the tomb and she's like, roll away the tomb. And as much as Martha believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God and could raise the dead, she didn't think he would raise her brother up at that moment. Because she's like, Lord, he's been dead four days. There's gonna be a stench. <laughs> you know, roll that stone away. It's gonna stink pretty bad, you know? And he's like, didn't I tell you you would see? Like, roll the stone away. You know, and they do. And so beautifully, Jesus calls Lazarus forth. This is a beautiful prefigurement or foreshadowing. What he does with Lazarus is a foreshadowing of what he will do with all of humanity. That on the last day when the Lord, the last trumpet sounds, the Lord will call all of us forth back from the dead and grant us our glorified bodies and restore the dignity of the fullness of our person. By his death and resurrection, he will call us back from death to life in the gift of the waters of baptism, bestowing upon us that grace that will allow us to truly live as God's sons and daughters and allow us to experience the beautiful resurrection from the dead. As Lazarus comes out of the tomb, Jesus says, untie him and let him go. This is something Jesus, we could say in one sense, proclaimed on his own resurrection from the dead. After suffering death for us and offering himself as an eternal sacrifice to the Father for us, he says to all of humanity, untie them and let them go. Untie them from the bondage of sin. Untie them from the bondage to Satan. Untie them from that original sin. Untie them from that, that slavery to sin. Untie them and let them go. Let them go. Where do we go? We go free as God's children. There's a lot in this story today, so much more to tell about it, but we'll just let the story itself speak for itself. Take some time today, perhaps, to sit again with this reading, this gospel, this chapter 11 of, Matthew's, of John's gospel, chapter 11 of John's gospel, and just pray with it and see what the Lord says to you through this. What's the message that God is giving to us personally in this? What's he asking of each of us in this story? It's a very powerful story. So today, let the Lord God lead us to that fullness of divine life, to call us out of darkness into light, to accompany us through the sufferings of this life, to the joy of the resurrection that awaits us all. May God bless you and Mary keep you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have been given, for you have given your children a sacred time, for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections. They may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the saints and angels, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him, and with him, and in him, the God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
when I am lifted up from the earth. I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I apologize, I'm a little tired today. I could preach for three hours against any Baptist minister. I could out preach any minister, Baptist minister. But put me in two committee meetings in one night in a row and I'm wasted. <laughs> so, yesterday we got our, finance, our um, facilities committee up and running. So thanks be to God, we have a, a, a group of men in the parish, about eight men in the parish, will be going through all the buildings, making sure we're all up to speed and code and all going well. So they've been, so it was a great, great start of a new, um, so we don't have problems like we had in the past where I have to run out fixing foundations catch problems before they start. So, um, but uh, anyway, so thanks be to God. Uh, so many wonderful things are happening here. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Enjoy the spring. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.